Did you know that in Notability, you can actually have six split screens at once? Most people only know that iPad supports left and right split screens, but in this app, you can place your textbook, notes, exercises, drafts, video courses, and even a chat window all on the same screen, achieving true multitasking for studying. In today's video, I'll show you how to unlock all the core features and hidden tricks of Notability. By the end, you'll be able to go from zero to taking notes like a pro. Also, two weeks ago, I released a full tutorial on GoodNotes. If you're still deciding which one to use, you might want to check that out. And next time, I'll do a full comparison between Notability and GoodNotes, so don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss it. Notability's note management page is a little different from GoodNotes. Instead of folders, it uses subjects and dividers. For example, if I create a new subject called Calculus, it will show up in the sidebar on the left. If I want to change the subject color or rename it, I just long press, and here I can create a new one, edit, rename, or delete. For instance, clicking here lets me pick a color or rename it. I can also lock or delete it here. Now I'll create a few more subjects. Then create three dividers and drag these subjects into their respective dividers. Now you see, all study-related content is well organized. Of course, you can keep dragging subjects to reorder them, move them to other dividers, or delete them. Note that dividers can be nested. You can insert them into secondary dividers. And also move them back out. But what if you have too many note dividers and the visual distinction isn't clear enough? Here's a little trick. By adding some symbols, you can make the categories much easier to distinguish. At the top, under Notes, we can view all notes. Clicking on a subject or notes at the top will display all notes as thumbnails. For example, if I create a new note, it instantly generates a thumbnail, making it easy to locate quickly. If we long press a note, we can rename it, add to favorites, copy, share, open in a new window, or delete it. By tapping the icon in the top right corner, we can choose to display notes as thumbnails or as a list. We can also batch select multiple notes to share, copy, favorite, or delete. We can also choose different sorting options, such as by name or by creation date. This system is especially useful for students who can organize by course or semester. It's also very handy for professionals, for example, placing different projects into different dividers. By tapping the new icon in the top right corner, we can quickly create a new note. This is much more convenient than good notes, since it doesn't require tedious setup first, one of the main reasons I prefer Notability. Inside the note, we can start writing right away or set a template first. We can set templates here or tap the icon on the right. There are lots of templates to choose from, basic templates, notebooks, academic-related ones, and even some from the marketplace. First, we need to choose whether the notebook is landscape or portrait. Then we select a color. We can choose from preset colors, more colors, or even custom colors. Importantly, base templates allow us to adjust line spacing. We can make it larger or smaller depending on our needs. Different iPad sizes require different line spacing, and this feature perfectly solves the problem. That's another reason why I prefer Notability. Of course, we can also directly import templates from files. Just locate the template in Files, open it with Notability, and we've created a new template. You'll see multiple pages here where we can start writing right away. Next. Let's look at the most important area of the note page, the toolbar. It contains a wide range of tools that help us take notes more efficiently. The toolbar can be placed at the top, or we can drag it to the side. Let's start with the pen tool. 
Tapping it opens color options. We can choose any color, and tapping again allows more customization, including entering color codes or using the color picker. Next is pen size. We can select from preset sizes or define custom ones. Then there are line types, ballpoint lines, fountain pen lines with pressure sensitivity, and dashed lines. Once set, we can start writing on the page. The pen tool can also help us draw perfect shapes. For example, if I draw a circle, it will snap into a perfect circle. It works for circles, rectangles, triangles, curves, or straight lines. We can also adjust them immediately afterward. Another variation of the pen is the pencil. It's great for drawing guidelines. And it supports stilt sensitivity, allowing shading with wide strokes. Like the pen tool, it supports different colors and sizes and can also snap into perfect shapes. Next is the highlighter. It helps us mark key points in our notes. Just like the pen, it can also snap into perfect shapes. It even has a hidden trick. You can use it for bullet points, like drawing small dots. It's also useful for filling large areas with color, and overlapping colors gives a layered effect. When erasing, highlights are erased first before the handwritten strokes. If you use the eraser again, then the handwriting gets erased. Now let's look at the eraser. We can choose different sizes or customize them. There are two modes, erase entire strokes or partial erase. Entire stroke means a continuous stroke will be erased all at once. Partial erase lets us erase precisely, bit by bit. If you're using Apple Pencil 2nd Gen or Pro version, you can double tap to quickly switch to the eraser, and once it finishes erasing, it will automatically switch back to the previous tool. If you want manual control, go to Settings, Note Editor, Handwriting and Drawing, and turn off Auto Deselect Eraser. This way, you'll need to manually switch back to the previous tool. Double tapping with two fingers on the screen undoes the last action, while three fingers redo it. By tapping the text icon, we can type with the keyboard. After selecting the text, we can format it just like in Word. Font, size, color, bold, bullet points, alignment, and so on. If we want more freedom in placing text boxes, we can enable quick text boxes here. Then by drawing a diagonal line, we can create a free text box and type inside it. For these free text boxes, we can also customize the background, duplicate, or delete them. For example, I can change the color here or turn it into stripes. You might notice we're using a handwriting style font here. We can also convert it into other fonts, but to use handwriting fonts, we need to import them in advance. For how to import, please check my previous GoodNotes tutorial. The lasso tool is arguably Notability's most powerful feature, making our notes much richer. It offers freeform and rectangular selection. For example, after writing text, if we need to adjust its position, size, or color, we can use the lasso. It also allows us to copy, cut, paste, or delete. That way, we only need to focus on content first, then refine the layout later with the lasso tool. Compared to GoodNotes, one advantage is that it lets us adjust stroke thickness and line style. A more advanced feature is converting handwriting into typed text, and the recognition is very accurate. It even supports converting mathematical formulas, including symbols that keyboards can't type, greatly improving efficiency. Can you imagine? Notability even lets us insert GIFs, making notes more lively. Just tap the plus sign, and we can insert photos, take pictures, add stickers, Sticky notes, 
or GIFs. If we're in Safari or Photos and find a good image, we can simply drag it into our note. If you're taking lecture notes, try using the recording tool. After recording, a play icon appears. Tap it to play back the audio, synced with your note-taking process. Here's a hidden trick. Tapping a word in your notes will jump the recording to that moment, which is super useful. You can skip forward or back 10 seconds, change playback speed, boost volume, rename, or delete. You can also edit the recording, split it, or rename segments. If we enable smart dictation along with recording, it will transcribe the audio into text. There are also some other tools. The magnifier lets us zoom into an area for editing. The laser pointer is useful for screen recording. Different pointer styles are available. The tape tool covers up sensitive information, like answers on practice exams. The ruler tool lets us draw straight lines more freely. And it scales according to the page zoom. With units marked, we can change ruler units in settings. Finally, we can reorder tools in the toolbar or hide the ones we rarely use. By tapping the icon on the far right, we can see thumbnails of all pages. Tapping the icon at the bottom left lets us edit pages. Add, cut, copy, create a new template, clear or delete. We can also set a page as a template so it appears in my templates for new notes. By tapping the bookmark icon in the top right of a page, we can add bookmarks and later filter by them. Long pressing and dragging lets us reorder pages. For batch actions, tap select, choose multiple pages, then copy, paste, cut, bookmark, clear, or delete. If you want to preview all pages quickly, tap the bottom right icon to see all thumbnails full screen. At the top, there's a search icon, entering keywords here will match content and take us directly to the right page. Notably, it recognizes both typed and handwritten text. On the home page, there's also a search icon, which helps us locate note pages across the app, greatly improving efficiency. Do you think split screen only means left and right? Today, I'll show you how to work across six areas simultaneously. First, open a note, then swipe from the left to reveal another note, long press it, and choose open on right. Now we have two notes side by side. We can take notes on both pages or view a textbook on one side while writing on the other. We can adjust the divider in the middle to resize them. If your iPad is too small for side by side, try rotating it vertically. Swipe to reveal another note and choose open at bottom. Now we have top and bottom split screen, making better use of smaller screens. On larger iPads, we can open another app alongside the split screen, for example, a browser. That way, we can view the textbook, search for information, and take notes simultaneously, three areas at once. If instead of a browser we open another notability window, we can work with three notes at the same time, or we can go even further open one more notability window at the bottom, then drag in another note. This way, we can have four notes open at once. On top of that, we can open a video in picture in picture mode, floating over the notes. We can move or resize the video window. And we can also slide out a chat app to discuss with classmates. Now we've got six active workspaces running simultaneously. Inside a note, by tapping the top right icon, we can export notes in different formats, PDF, native notability format, or image, important. Exporting in notability's native format allows others to import and directly edit the note. There are more options here, such as including backgrounds, margins, and recordings, or encrypting the file. We can also share via link, as long as we're logged in, 
enabling collaborative editing. In settings, under Connected Services, we need to ensure iCloud Sync is enabled. I strongly recommend this, so notes are available on Mac or iPhone. Of course, we can also back up to other platforms, such as Dropbox or Google Drive. Note editor settings are very important. Here we can set the default note title, default template, and default keyboard input style. We can also configure key handwriting features like math conversion, straight line assistance, and shape detection. There are gesture settings too, for example, two finger tap to undo, three finger tap to redo. Here we can even set Notability's theme color, change it each season to match your mood. If you accidentally delete a file, you can find it under Recently Deleted, select it, and restore it. Lastly, the newest AI feature can quickly summarize entire documents. Just tap it, and the summary appears. Tap View to read the details. It can even generate practice questions to test your understanding of the notes, a very smart and practical function. All right, that's the full walkthrough of Notability. If you still have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Also, let me know, do you prefer GoodNotes or Notability? Next time, I'll make a full comparison between the two to see which one suits you better. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next week.